Imagine how it felt for college students in Washington, watching the insurrection just a few blocks away. So I was actually at my off-campus apartment um, at school. So I'm, I'm seeing everything unfold on my television, and I'm also looking out the window and seeing emergency vehicles you know, zoom down the street. That made it even more surreal just to experience that really, you know, just like two or three blocks from the White House. We all got a tough lesson in government that day, including students who were actually in government class. I conveniently had an AP U.S. government class when my teacher basically looked at all of us and said, everybody unmute your microphones and wait one second. We were like, OK, so we all unmuted our microphones and listened. And then he shared his screen with us, and it was just the news. And we were all stunned. The kinds of scenes that we have seen in, in foreign places that uh, would, would give us a chill, and uh, perhaps leaving a chill, certainly as we watch it take place outside our own capital. For some Gen Zers, January 6th was a work day. I had actually just started an internship at the Arizona State Capitol. And January 6th was my second day of work. Security came up and said, hey, we're going to send you guys home. There's people who are coming with guns now. They told you that there were armed people who were coming to the Arizona State Capitol. Yeah, there were protesters who were coming with guns. And so they all sent they sent the entire building home. Um, and I remember like walking through this entire mob of people with like flags and like um, different gear on to get to my car. And when I got home, I was sitting on the couch. And that's when I kind of like saw the first pictures of what was happening in D.C. Um, that's when it kind of like clicked for me like, oh, this is a really big thing. One young man says he heard from his younger cousins in India. The first thing I heard from abroad was my cousin texting me saying, well, it looks like American democracy is losing. It's no longer an inferiority complex between foreign democracies. It is that people don't view the United States, in my opinion, as the pinnacle that it used to be. That doesn't mean all hope is lost. That means that we have to recognize the seriousness of the problem, but then address it that way. Generation Z might be the best equipped group to address it or at least the most optimistic. A recent survey showed strong concern across the board about America's future. However, young adults were the least pessimistic about democracy surviving. Ali Spagnolo is eager to cast her next ballot. Today, she's a member of the College Democrats. Back in 2020, she was too young to vote by one week. What goes through your head? What goes through your heart? when you think about voting this fall and in 2024? If you asked me that question a year ago, I definitely think that I would have told you that I was more than anything intimidated. Um, but at this point now, as we've watched democracy grow and we've seen the setbacks, we've seen all the ugly and all the beautiful, I feel more than anything hopeful to do my part and contribute. So is Ezra Meyer, an officer with his campus's college Republicans. He says he wants to distance himself from the people who supported the attack. I think the actions of criminals are being used to paint a picture of everyone who feels conservative in this country. And that's really unfair. And it, it's really frustrating for a lot of conservatives to be painted as criminals. January 6th may have turned many Gen Zers off to politics altogether. Jessica Carpenter says politicians might draw them back by focusing on solutions and getting things done. When they don't see follow through or they're kind of let down again by political leaders, it just reinstates that thought of what am I even why? Why should I participate in this? Today, Jessica leads marketing for Bridge USA, a nonprofit that promotes bipartisan engagement on college campuses. Manu Meal is its founder and CEO. He says January 6th presented an opportunity, and his peers need to step up. So if you're going to live in the most ambitious democratic experiment in the history of humanity, and you say, are we going to have challenges? Absolutely. We are the most diverse, most armed, most technologically advanced, most democratic society that the planet has ever seen. Think about it like that. And when that's what we've got to lose, we've got a lot to fight for. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.